thank, uh, thank you, Chair. And could I join with you at the outset in thanking our speakers? I think they were collectively very interesting and very specific and focused in terms of recommendations, which I think is great because uh, you can't just go on stating the issues in a broad philosophical sense. We have to come up, we have to have a solution-based approach. And that was very, very apparent in all of your contributions. And that's that's welcome. Um, I'd like, first of all, I, I want to raise two or a few things, but I'd like if you could elaborate on what exactly you mean. I have a broad sense of what you mean, but I'm not sure specifically by the social enterprise opportunities. If you could elaborate a little more on that. Um, I personally think that I, I'd like to know, do any of you, can any of you comment on how much or how little this, the current uh, community employment schemes are being used in a positively discriminatory way for to assist a, a start for some travellers working on them? I mean, they're not ideal. They're not ideal for either travellers or other ethnic Groupings and or the settled community, but the, but they are they have been very empowering, and I can know I have anecdotal evidence, or real evidence among people I know for whom they've been transformative as a human being, and where they've had huge impacts on their lives. And um, the inter, I, I just want to make a broad point, Chair. I think that you and Leo specifically should be looking at how can we now see about getting these implemented and how is a committee, we're not, I know we're not an executive, and we're not actual implementers of, of government things, but we are at the same time an important committee and I think we should look for access to, we should look for access to, sorry, I'm putting off a phone call coming in there, we should look for access to uh, departments now specifically PowerPoints now to come in before the committee to see to get each of these recommendations dealt with. And I think the internships in the public sector is vital. I know we had a discussion on this before, but we need to name that in terms of a level, the numbers and the departments and where and what and how. We need very specific things there. And I'm commending to you, Chair, and to Mr. Bollins that between ye that you see to a programme that brings in these people now to get answers around that. Um, again, travellers in public sector jobs, I think that, I know we've had presentations, but we need action on that too, to see the actual quotas and numbers there. And uh, A very interesting point is raised there, because you will recall, Chair, as a colleague of mine in the Senate, that I raised this very recently in the Senate in relation, these publicly funded grant schemes in relation to their linkages to Northern Ireland for the sake of an All-Ireland peace situation that they should have evidence of links to Northern Ireland all those sports capital grants and all before that it should be part of the evaluation process and you would have heard me at that I'm very excited or uh, impressed by the recommendation that states when state support has been given to big employers and there's a lot of that all of us as public reps have more than any knowledge of that we deal with it, we process them, we bring them to local enterprise offices, and the grants are generous on their widespread and preferential loans, etc., etc. We all know the stuff. So there should be a link there to traveller employment. Now, you can't set crazy targets, but there should be targets, and there should be an actual tie-up there. And that's something we should specifically uh, pursue. I like your point. That's a very real one, and I think that should be done uh, I like your point about the liaison workers. I mean, this has worked fairly well from my own evidence in my own constituency of Cabin I when I was a TD and currently I'm still processing stuff the same, that I do see in the disability sector, this has worked pretty well, in that I would be aware of people who are in, I can think of a number of enterprises who are people because of disability placement person called to the business and there was support. So the liaison workers are vital and I would like to see that led. I'm interested in the peer-led scheme, I put the scheme or service and I think that's good too. But unfortunately, might I be correct, you might comment on this, there aren't many peers in the workplace to be peer leaders, you know. Uh, maybe you'd comment on the degree or how that might work in practice. Now, there was a very new and innovative program. You did, I, in the beginning, 
Our first speaker, Rachel, cited a number of government initiatives that are pending now. And I wonder would she comment, she cited pathways, a few things that are pending at the moment. I can't recall exactly. Would she comment, does she know that there's a, this, a positive discrimination towards travellers within those? Or is she aware that there's not? And is it, if she's aware that there's not, is it too late? Has the horse left the stable on this occasion? It is shocking if there's not, but that's how life is. So, but the recent apprenticeship scheme, and I should be more familiar with this than I am, although I have the broad stroke stuff on it and we got a lot of briefing, but the Minister Harris has recently done a national apprenticeship thing program and announced it and flagged it and put it out there. And it's an exciting thing to the extent that it gets over the it gets over the thing that you must become an academic and be academically orientated on day one to ultimately end up with high level qualifications. But I'd like to know specific that's not today's agenda, but what the, well, to a degree it is. But what's relevant today is to what degree is there any positive discrimination built in for travellers there? And it's it's a bit like I was in favour of gender quotas in the political sphere, although some women object to them on the grounds of the meritocracy thing. But I personally favoured them in that I thought you needed them to break the glass ceiling. And they were implemented. We have a 40% thing now. But what am I saying? We will have to break the glass ceiling for travellers by similar methods, by quotas, by positive discrimination, by by legislation, by grants being tied up. I think you, the glass ceiling is so enormous that it will take targeted action and I think we should refrain, and I'm as bad as the next one at this, for stating the problem. We should start actually getting some results. And that's what I commend to you, Chair, and to Mr. Bolland, to see could you focus some meetings now on where we'd ask, are these things going to happen? Um, if there's an expression, if you'll excuse it, up in the country where I come from, a, a, an agricultural, rural-based expression, which is that you have to, you can't spend all the time weighing the pig you must spend time feeding the pig. That basically means you must act on things, not just state the problem. We can all talk about road safety, but if you don't put road safety measures in place, nothing happens if you don't have drink driving laws, etc. So the same principle applies here. It's We know the problem. We know the roots of it. We know why. But what I think we know need now is to see could these recommendations actually get implemented. And they are good recommendations. Thanks, Chair. That's my bit. Thank you. Thank you.